Many years ago, Swami Kriyananda wrote a wonderful song that I'd like to share with you today. It's called, Why? their fathers for money and clothes, but all she could ask was mine. She saw the solemn clouds gathered watching a rainbow, the bright rays of their joy filled the sky. Her teachers explained it all wisely away, but still her heart wondered why. She saw the silent stars thrill the night with their gladness. They seem some wondrous truth to imply. Her elders all slept, but the magic of light would wake her to ponder why. Mother smile as she tended her baby. A widow weep that love had to die. The joy of new friends and the sadness of parting, all these made her ask God why. To her heart stole the secret of oneness, the bond not even time can untie. For love there possessed her and made her his own, in love she at last learned. love that song and it captures in many ways the spirit and you might say the the background of Swami Kriyananda's own life in fact I'll I'll just share some words that he wrote about that song he said this song represents the history of my life though I am obviously not myself a tender maid and never I have never been nor have I sought to be a macho male indifferent to the tenderness of wonder at the nature of human existence as a child I ask myself constantly why are we here why are there stars in the sky why do we feel love in our hearts have we no higher destiny than death my own solution was the same as that uh, that of this tender maid i came to see at last that underlying all the innumerable experience expressions of life there is one uniting consciousness 
In unity, I found my answer to that eternal question, why? This was the third song I ever wrote. Finally, such finally was the answer I too found in my own seeking. And I will add my testimony to Swami Kriyananda's. In my own life, I was always asking why. And it's a very inconvenient question. And perhaps you've been around a child who got the whys and well, why, mommy? Why does the garbage man come? Well, he comes to pick up the trap. Why? Do, why? Why? And it's there's no end to it. And I don't mean that kind of asking. We don't have to nag at God. We don't have to pester God. But when this, I mean, I remember as a kid climbing out on the roof. There was a, we had a porch. Well, actually, I could climb on the ladder and get on the garage roof, and I did that sometimes too. But there was a porch outside my sister's window and sometimes we'd take the screen off and climb through the window out onto the porch because it was right the roof was practically the same level as the window and and it was a not a very steep slope and i remember lying on that roof staring up into the sky looking at the stars and just pondering the unbelievable vastness of this universe the unbelievable complexity and diversity and just sort of in awe, just taking it all in. And that question persisted through the experiences of my youth because I would see people around me for whom materialism was an obvious religion. It was not even concealed really i mean it was just sort of like well wow why else would you live except to accumulate stuff you know to sort of prove that you've accomplished something or i don't i could never quite i could never figure out why why are we trying to accumulate stuff and similarly i i was around people who they're they're sort of underlying concern was, well, what will other people think? Which was not entirely irrelevant to me, especially if I considered those people wise. And I have to confess that I didn't consider that many people wise in my youth or my childhood. But nevertheless, I mean, I, I would have, I did take advice and I did take opinions sometimes. But that underlying question why? Why? Because the whole world seemed to be marching to a different theme, a different pace, a different drummer, a different, a different wavelength. Why? What? What motivates people? And for me, what was motivating me was I just had to understand. I had to know, and that holding that question up. It is entirely legitimate in our lives to live a question. And this is one of the most fundamental questions you could ever live. Why? Why, why exist? What is the purpose of my life? Why? Just simply, why, Lord? And to hold that question up is to ultimately receive the answer. And it doesn't come in the form of a long, winded, boring explanation of, you know, well, it's because of your karma. Well, it's because, you know, Adam and Eve sinned way back in the Bible in the early dawn of civilization. It's an answer that can only satisfy our hearts. Our hearts can only be satisfied by the kind of expression that Swamiji gives in this song. For love there possessed her and made her his own. In love she at last learned why. And I love, I love how he describes in that verse, one night into her heart stole the secret of oneness. And 
it steals into her heart. It, it isn't like it overwhelmed her. It isn't like it attacked her. It isn't like, you know, she got a degree and it came to her with the diploma or something. It's, it stole into her heart in the silence of the night. And if you will look in the silence of the night in your life and hold a question like that up from your heart, with all the sincerity of your being, you will find the answer. It will come to you. Does it come immediately? Does it come just for the asking? Well, it will eventually, yes. But when that longing becomes sufficient, it's like it pulls on the universe. The entire universe begins to respond. And so, I will urge all of us to live the question that is at the core of our being. And in fact, it's a good question to just simply ask yourself, what is the question that I live? Because in a sense, I think all of us do live a question. And I can't tell you what yours is. I can tell you that mine has always been to know and to achieve that oneness. And I believe on a certain level, all of us want that. We just may name it different ways, and that's perfectly fine. But that call ultimately has to go up from every soul. Namaste.